Okay, so sir, an example for uh, normal stress. So for example, we have these three segments. So let's say we have at point A, we have a force that is to, to the left, 4,000 pounds. At point B, that is 9,000 pounds to the right. At point C, also to the right, that is 2,000 pounds. At point D, we have 7,000 pounds to uh, the left. So there are uh, three different uh, segments since uh, we have three different cross-sectional areas. We are required to determine the actual stress per uh, segment. So actual stress or normal stress, that is basically equal to the force divided by the area wherein the applied force should be perpendicular to the okay, area. So for this case, we have multiple segments, multiple actual forces. We may use two procedures. Uh, the first one is by equilibrium. We cut and expose each segment. Uh, the other one is uh, we can use the load diagram. I will use the load diagram to determine the actual actual axial force per a segment. So for this case, I will may consider the forces to the left to be negative and forces to the right to be uh, positive. And we usually start on the right end. So we are starting on the right end of these three uh, segments. So for example, we have seven thousand pounds. I will be assuming that is negative or it is compressing the segment. And it is, its direction is uh, to the left. So this is, uh, we have negative 7,000 pounds. That is for segment by CD. Then we have, at point C, we have an applied force of 2,000 pounds. That is to the right. So we are to do the summation. That is positive 2,000 plus negative 7,000. We'll be having a value of, uh, right, the value will be equal to negative 5. So for segment BC, the actual force is equal to negative 5,000. Then we are now at point B. At point B, we have an applied force of 9,000. That is to the right. So we have 5,000 plus 9,000. And the result will be equal to my positive. This is now positive 4,000. So 9,000 plus negative 5,000 is... 4,000. This is for segment AB. Then at segment AB or at point A, we are now at point A. This is positive 4,000. Okay, we are assuming that forces to the left to be negative. Okay, this is negative 4,000 plus 4,000 will give us a value of a zero. So which means okay, these three segments are okay, under equilibrium. So one advantage of this procedure, if we are using the procedure of the load diagram, we may, consider, uh, we may conclude that the negative portions of the diagram are under compression. So it means segment C is under compression since we have negative values. Segment BC is also under compression, negative 5,000. And segment AB is under tension since we have positive 4,000. That is one advantage of the load diagram. We can determine easily uh, which segment is under compression or under tension. So we may now conclude okay, what is the actual force for member AB? The actual force for member AB is equal to 4,000 pounds and this is under tension. We have the actual force for member BC is equal to, this is negative 5,000. So the negative sign indicates that or the negative sign indicates that this is under compression or a compressive force. Then the same with segment CD is equal to negative 7,000 pounds, also under compression. So those are okay, the actual actual forces per segment based on our load diagram. So to compute for the actual stresses, okay, let's have first the actual stress for member AB this is equal to we have 4,000 pounds. This is divided by the cross-sectional area. We have a cross-sectional area of 1.2 square inches. And it's now equal to, we have uh, 4,000 divided by 1.2, or let's equal to 3,000. We have 3,333.333 pounds per square inch, or the PSI. 
and this one is under tensile stress. Alright, that is for the stress for member or segment AB. Then we have for segment BC, we have this is negative 5,000 pounds. Uh, divided by the cross sectional area for segment BC is 1.8 square inches. This is divided by 1.8 square inches is equal to, we have 5,000 5, divided by 1.8 is equal to 2,777.778 pounds per square inch. And this is a negative, which means this is under compression. And then the last uh, segment, this is for segment CD. We have the axial stress for segment CD is equal to by the force. What is the force for segment CD? This is equal to negative 7,000 pounds. And this is divided by cross sectional area. We have 1.6 square inches. So let's have 7,000 divided by 1.6. Okay, this is negative 4,375 pounds per square inches or the PSI. So the negative sign indicates that this is a compressive stress. So these are the stresses per segment. So somehow it is, or sometimes it is more uh, easy or easier to determine the net actual force per segment using the load diagram. So let's have an example. So first of all, we have this uh, set up. We have member AB and member uh, AC. Uh, they are to carry the maximum safe value of uh, the weight. Our uh, properties allow the stresses for AB is 110 megapascals, for AC 120 megapascals. Then the areas for member AB that is 800 square millimeters. For member AC we have 400 square uh, millimeters. So from this allowable stresses, we can determine the allowable axial force or axial forces for each uh, member. For each member. Alright, so we have from allowable stresses, let us determine the allowable axial force per uh, member. So basically we have the stress is equal to the force divided by the uh, area. So we have the stress for member AB is equal to the allowable force for member AB divided by the area of member AB. So what is the allowable stress for member AB? We have 110. This is 110 megapascals is the same as newtons per square millimeters. Is equal to the force for member AB divided by cross-sectional area for AB is equal to Okay, we have 800 square mm. So we may cancel the square mm. The allowable axial force for member AB is now equal to. So we have 110 times 800 is equal to. Or is equal to 88,000 88, newtons. Or we have the axial force for member AB is the same as 88 kilo newtons. So this is. The allowable axial force for member uh, AB. Then for member B, uh, AC, this is sigma AC is equal to the axial force for member AC divided by the area for member AC. We have the sigma is 120 megapascals or newtons per square mm. Is equal to the axial force for member AC divided by area. We have that as 400 square mm. So we have the axial force for member AC. So what is okay, 400 divided by 120? This is equal to 48. And we have 48,000 newtons, or this is the same as in the newtons divided by 1,000, 48 kilo newtons. As you can see, uh, this one is a weaker member. A weaker member is uh, AC. So we, we are we discussing about weaker member? Take note that if you are designing structures. The weaker material holds the design. The weaker material dictates the design. Kung baga sa pag-design kasi, kung sino yung mas mahinang material, yun yung i-consider natin muna. So, we need to check equilibrium. We have the allowable forces. Okay, let 
us a uh, check equilibrium. So this is the axial force for member AB and the axial force for member uh, AC. Uh, take note that we cannot use directly okay, their allowable forces. Okay, we need to check equilibrium. For example, if the axial force for member AB if the axial force for member AB is already 88 kN. So let's say this is our first situation. We are just inspecting the, okay, the setup. For example, if we have the axial force for member AB is 88 kN, what will be the axial force for member AC? Okay, take note, we are checking equilibrium. How to determine the axial force for member AC? This is by summation of forces. Horizontal equal to zero. To the right forces to be positive. So this is the axial force for member AC cosine of 60 degrees minus AB is 88 kN. This is cosine of 40 degrees is equal to a zero. We have the axial force for AC. What will be the axial force for member AC? If AB will be 88 kN. If we are to use the allowable force for AB. So this is 88 cosine 40. I divide by cosine 60. And the force will be equal to 134.824 kN. So basically this value is way greater than the allowable force for AC, which is 48 kN. Which means AB, okay, we cannot use the capacity of AB, 88 kN. So this is not, okay, not okay. So what about if we are to use the capacity of member AC? Okay, what if, what is our second okay, trial? If uh, let's say if the axial force for member AC, we are using its capacity, this is 48 kN, what will be the axial force for member AB? Uh, this is for equilibrium. So we have by summation of forces, horizontal equal to zero, to the right forces to be a positive. So this axial force for AC will be equal to 48 kN, cosine of 60 degrees. Minus the axial force for member AB, the axial force for member AB, then cosine of 40 degrees is not equal to zero. What will be the axial force for member AB if we are to use the capacity of AC? So it's the same as 48 cosine of 60 divided by cosine of 40. Right. The force for member AB is 31.33 kN. This value is way less than 88 kN. Right. This is 88 kN, the capacity of member AB. Therefore, we can conclude that this is a safe. So if it is safe, we can now conclude Okay, we can now conclude what are the forces to be used. So, for our conclusion, we are using the axial force for member AC that is equal to 48 kN that will give an axial force for member AB a value of 31.33 kN. So, this is less than its capacity for uh, 88 Killing your cars, which means it will be safe since it is less than the uh, less than the uh, capacity 88 killing your cars. So by summation of forces, vertical equal to zero, upward forces to be positive, we cannot determine the, the weight. We are using the value of AB 31.33 killing your cars to be safe. This is 31.33 killing your cars, vertical component that is sine of 40 degrees. Okay, plus AC, we are using its full capacity is 48 kN. Vertical component, we are using sine 60 degrees minus the weight equal to a zero. So we have now the value of the weight is 
31.33 sine of 40 degrees by plus uh, by 48 kN sine of 60 degrees. So we are having a value of 61.708 kN. This is the maximum weight or maximum value of the weight that can be carried by these two members okay, based on their allowable stresses. So this will be our solution. So take note, a while ago, I mentioned that the weaker material holds the design. It will dictate the design. Okay? Uh, the weaker material dictates the design. So again, if the weaker material is safe, the entire design is safe. That is our sample.